Good evening. I am Michelle Sturgis of the NAACP. On behalf of the League of Women Voters, the NAACP, and the News Gazette, I welcome you to tonight's candidate forum. Tonight's forum is, is for aldermen in the city of Urbana, Ward 4. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we are unfortunately not presenting this forum in person. We have received many questions for these forums. Similar questions which have been submitted have been cons consolidated and consequently, your question may not be asked in precisely the way you submitted it. Due to limited time, we may not be able to get to all the submitted questions. After the forum, this video will be available on the League of Women Voters YouTube channel and Facebook page in a few days. You can also find this video in the Nonpartisan Voters Guide at votechampaign.org. In each, in each forum will be linked to the candidate's information. It will also be broadcast by UPTV. The UPTV schedule is available on the City of Urbana website. I will be the moderator for this forum. The order for candidates is alphabetical, therefore, will open Mike Koble and Jaya Kolesewski will close. Each candidate will be given two minutes for an opening statement. I will then ask questions submitted prior to the forum and candidates will each have one minute to answer these questions. At the end, each candidate will have two minutes for a closing statement. Candidates will kindly refrain from any negative attacks on the other candidate, will not mention the other candidate by name, and will speak only to what they plan to do if elected to office. Mr. Coble will begin his opening statement. Okay. Well, hello everyone. My name is Mike Coble. I'm Champaign-Urbana born and raised. I was uh, blessed to be in a family with a father in the Air Force and my mother a nurse. So the logical career path for me was the fire service and EMS. And I'm proud to say this year that I'm celebrating 33 years in that chosen field. Um, I believe in service to my community. I think everyone should serve in their community. I've been a volunteer for 10 years with the Champaign County Freedom Celebration Committee, served on their board of directors and president, and I've served 10 years as well with the Champaign County Fair Association Board of Directors, and I've served as their president as well. I have uh, been working over the years with um, state, federal, local government agencies in my career. I have degrees from Parkland College, Eastern Illinois University, and Southern Illinois University. And I've got uh, successful experience with grants and contracts, building and infrastructure needs, and uh, capital expenses, special projects, and, and all the associated things with those. Uh, I want folks to know that I'll bring to the Urbana City Council critical thinking skills for some complex problems. and. Uh, solve them with common sense solutions. Thank you. Ms. Colazetti. He wasn't letting me unmute, sorry about that. A story of our lives right now. Um, I'm so happy to be here tonight. I'd like to start by thanking the League of Women Voters, the NAACP, the News Gazette, and my opponent for participating in this forum. I watched the primary sessions with great interest and believe that this kind of open and transparent communication is essential to our democracy. I'm excited to be part of this conversation and believe that the Urbana City Council has a unique opportunity to create change, but also has a particular ob obligation to do so. Like many members of our community, the murder of George Floyd brought me out to the streets to protest this summer. Now it is the words of my students of color at the University of Illinois who drive me to want to do more. This fall, as the COVID-19 pandemic dragged on and attention to the protests died down, I heard my students repeatedly say that they were afraid that they were already being forgotten. 
Urbana has a long history of committing to diversity and equity initiatives. And I believe it is time to couple this commitment with action. I will work for evidence-based, sustainable, and community-specific solutions. I believe that I'm well positioned to do this. I have an MBA and a master's in public policy, as well as extensive experience with grant writing and fiscal management. And most importantly, I know this community. I know its needs. I've worked and volunteered with various local nonprofits, including six years at Rape Advocacy Counseling and Education Services. And I know where the gaps in our social services lie. I would make addressing these holes in our social support systems a priority, along with improving our infrastructure and working to address racial inequality. At the same time, I believe the COVID-19 response and recovery efforts and comprehensive police reform must be central to the work of the council. Thank you so much for this opportunity. You're muted. Okay, can you hear me now? Thank you. Next, we will begin our questions. First question will be addressed by Mr. Coble. First question. Why is the city of Urbana important to you? How will Ward 4 and the city as a whole be better because of your service on the city council? The city of Urbana is important to me because this is home. This is where I was born and raised. Um, I think that I bring to the council some of the things I alluded to in my opening statements. Uh, I have a lot of experience with complex problems, be it budgetary. Um, I like to approach those with fiscal responsibility. Um, I think all too often that uh, folks on boards, not necessarily our own city council, but folks on boards and the decision makers tend to look at the big and shiny aspects of what something can bring to the city and not necessarily look so far beyond that to see that there might be some negative outcome from that. Um, we all need to work as a team. I need to represent the ward number four, and we all need to work as a team on that council to move forward solving some of the problems that we have. Um, the list continues to grow with uh, problems with violence in our community, problems with uh, racial tensions that are in our community, and I've been given the stop sign. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Colazetti, same question, I'll repeat it. Why is the city of Urbana important to you? How will Ward 4 and the city as a whole be better because of your service on the city council? Yeah, I love this question. I remember it coming up in the, the primaries as well. Um, I've chosen to make Urbana my home. My family has chosen to make Urbana our home. Um, I come from a, a multiracial, multinational family and when I first came to Urbana-Champaign as an undergraduate student, it made me feel so comfortable, so at home to see such a diverse community. Um, and it's what's kept me here. It's what's made me um, want to start my family here. Um, my husband and I have lived in the fourth ward um, the whole time we've been married. Um, so really we have deep roots here in terms of what it would mean for me to be on the council. Uh, the work that I do is as an advocate. Uh, my job, both when I was at Rape Advocacy Counseling and Education Services, and now at the Women's Resources Center, is to listen to the needs of others, to advocate on their behalf, to make sure that their needs are being met, and that they feel listened to, heard, that there's compassion, there's empathy, and support. And so those are what I would bring to the council. Thank you. Mr. Coble, you're next. Next question. What unaddressed issues in Ward 4 are priorities for you? And there's two parts to this question. The second part is what issues are your priorities for the city as a whole? Want me to repeat it? Yeah, you better. Okay. Um, it, it, to be fair, isn't it her turn to answer first? Okay. Let's change that. Ms. Colazetti, you're first. So I'll repeat it. It's two part question. What unaddressed issues in Ward 4 are priorities for you? 
The second part, what issues are your priorities for the city as a whole? I, I appreciate uh, the camaraderie with this, this forum. Um, I think we're all learning the format together. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the issues of Ward 4 are similar to those of the city. Of course, different parts of the city have, have different needs as well. Um, you know, the, right now, I think some of our underlying concerns, unmet needs are exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. So things like how homelessness, um, concerns about utility shutoffs. Um, I know that the current council has been doing a lot of work, um, especially with the Cunningham Township to address both of those needs. Um, I think it's really important that we continue to, continue to center the most vulnerable members of our communities, those who may be most disadvantaged, to make sure that we do have adequate systems of support. Um, there are other infrastructure needs, rough roads, um, there's poor lighting in the part of the ward that I think we are both in. Um, so thinking about how we try to increase the safety of our community um, is gonna be a multi-dimensional um, kind of problem solving piece. So uh, those basic social supports um, infrastructure are some of the, the most apparent. Thank you. Mr. Coble, same question. Um, what unaddressed issues in Ward 4 are your priorities? And there's two parts to this. The second part is what issues are your priorities for the city as a whole? Well, uh, the unaddressed issues, I, I don't know that we have unaddressed issues. I think everyone is working really hard on some of these things. The, uh, the social climate programs with rent assistance, uh, COVID vaccinations, things of that nature are, are running, they're up and running and they need to continue to run and we need to make sure we support those. Um, one of my big projects is uh, the infrastructure of the city uh, roads and lighting conditions, and uh, may not be the best economic climate for it, but one of the things that I really want to work hard is to start up some efforts to build up the South Philo Road Business District. It would be nice to have some uh, some other dine-in establishments out there other than a drive-up window, and uh, it would sure be nice to have hardware store in this end of town. Thank you. <laughs> Next question. Um, Mr. Coble, yes. you're next. Okay. What do you think will be your biggest challenge if you are elected? Finding money to do all of the things that I, I just spoke about there. Um, budgets are tight the world over. The list of things that councils need to uh, work on continues to grow. And we need to look at outside resources for some of those things, grant monies from the state level, from the federal level. Um, and when, then uh, we also need to prioritize the step ahead of that to make sure we understand which programs really need those funds. Thank you. Same question, Ms. Colasetti. How do you think, well, I mean, what do you think would be your biggest challenge if you are elected? Yeah, I think that this is a difficult question to answer in the current moment, right? We're, we're all doing this through Zoom. We can't ignore COVID. Um, so of course that is a pressing issue. Um, but I think it's also important that we don't lose sight of the, the need to address racial inequality. Um, there's massive change happening at the state level, but I think it's important for us to think about what the community specific needs are for Urbana. So I see that as part of, of this answer. Um, but I think we do have to recognize that there are going to be financial constraints. I was re uh, reviewing the current fiscal year budget just recently, and, and we're fortunate in Urbana that the current council and mayor have created a rainy day fund. And I know the most recent quarterly report was looking at expenditures that are over average, but not depleting as much of that reserve as had been anticipated. So I think we can get creative, but we do need to look at other sources of funding to make sure that we can keep moving forward to support our local businesses to address the impact of COVID on individuals as well. Okay, thank you. Next question, Ms. Colazetti, you're next. Um, if the budget has to be cut due to reduced revenue, where do you think the cut should fall? Well, this is a great segue um, from our last question. Um, I think as of now, uh, the city is in a pretty good place. 
Um, I'm hoping that we don't have to see more cuts. I know they've held, had some hiring freezes already, um, but I do think it's important to have a diversified funding stream or a set of funding streams rather. Um, so it is important to keep looking at what other options are out there in terms of federal funding, state funding, um, however we can make sure that we're continuing to bring revenue in. Um, and that is a, is a complicated multidimensional uh, question, right? We also need to think about bringing in businesses as well so that we can increase and, and maintain our tax base as dur you know, during this, this time of crisis. Um, but as of now, what I'm seeing from what is publicly available, the city is on the right track um, due to some um, kind of planning in advance for exactly these kinds of situations. Um, let's see, same question. Mr. Coble, if the budget has to be cut due to reduced revenues, where do you think the cut should fall? Well, the very last thing we wanna do is cut our budgets. Um, I mentioned earlier, we need to look at outside sources for funding to come in. But if we get to that critical state, we obviously wanna take care of the people and the residents first. We wanna make sure that they're assisted and, and their needs are met. Um, the very back seat on some of these things is unfortunately probably gonna be the infrastructure of the city. Some of the roadways, some of the lighting, some of the buildings and sewer systems. Uh, and they'll have to be looked at to see what can be placed on the back burner for a while. But uh, priority one's the people, making sure all the social services are met and, uh, and our essential services, our police, fire, and our public works folks uh, have jobs and uh, we can keep them on a payroll and gainfully employed because there's, there's always gonna be plenty to do in the city. Okay, thank you. Next question, Mr. Coble. And this question for both of you, it's like a two to three part question. So it's sort of long, so I'm gonna, I'll read that just, okay. There are a number of deteriorated properties in the city. Do you know how the city defines problem properties and what the city does to deal with them? That's the first part. Second part, are there any designated problem properties in Ward 4? And the last part of that, how can landlords be accountable to deteriorated properties? The, the practice of the city uh imposes investing these. I have to say I'm not 100% familiar with. Um, I assume that there's conditions that are dilapidated, unsafe, unoccupied residences. Um, part two of the question, I'm sorry, was... Are there any designated problem properties yes. in Ward 4? Yeah, I, I know of a couple that I have run across and I'm sure there are more uh, when I was out collecting signatures. And uh, absolutely, the third prong to that is we need to hold the landlords responsible for the condition of those properties. Um, you know, they sit dilapidated and unfortunately all kinds of activities can go on there in there from, from drugs to arson to those types of things, just generating multiple unsafe conditions. But the accountability phase of that certainly should lie on the landlord and the city should enforce that with all possible power. Okay, thank you. Ms. Colazzetti, same question, it's three parts. Okay, there are a number of deteriorated properties in the city. Do you know how the city defines problem properties and what the city does to deal with them? The second part of that is, are there any designated problem properties in Ward 4? And the last part, how can landlords be held accountable by deteriorated properties? And if you need me to repeat any of that, just let me know. I think I have it. Um, this is a question or a similar version of this question also came up in the primaries. And, and I have to say that I think it's a, a little bit challenging for folks who aren't already in office. Um, I know that representative, representative, I'm sorry, Councilwoman Wu had a really good response to this question. She was talking about kind of where some of these um, regulations around problem properties came up um, with instances that concerns about properties that were kind of coming to the city council on, on multiple occasions. 
Um, and I do think it's a little bit challenging for those of us who are not already in office, you know, for both of us who are running for Ward 4 to answer that question. Um, I've been doing some digging and trying to figure out the answer of like, do we have problem prob properties based on the technical definition from the city? Um, there definitely are properties that are dilapidated, that are um, not safe for occupants either, right? That definitely could use some support and would need to be addressed. Um, but in terms of making sure that it's following exactly what the, the policies are around that, it's a little hard to find that in information from the outside. Thank you. Next question, Ms. Colazetti. How will you represent the variety of residents in your ward so that everyone's concerns are heard? Families, students, renters, landlords, homeowners, et cetera. I think that's one of the really important things about being on city council is making sure both that um, council members are accessible to the people that they represent, but that there's also intentional outreach. Um, that is harder right now during COVID to you know, get out there and talk to folks, um, but thinking about how do we build that community, um, especially when we are able to be back in person. Uh, to me, I think it's really important to be available in, in multiple formats, recognizing that not everyone has the same technology um, knowledge, much less access. Uh, so I think that it is important that we're thinking about ways to, to ensure that, that the wide range of folks can reach out. I know even as I was collecting signatures, I was hearing from folks who um, don't vote, they can't vote because they're not citizens, but thinking about how do we make sure that we are hearing from all of our residents um, and the diversity of the needs, because it is a very diverse community. We do have a lot of different folks with varying needs and that changes from one part of the ward to another. Thank you. Mr. Coble, same question. How will you represent the variety of residents in your ward so that everyone's concerns are heard? Families, students, renters, landlords, homeowners, et cetera. Well, ward four oh, is plenty diverse uh, with economic backgrounds and, and uh, and associated uh, uh, things of that nature. The alderman um, certainly needs to make themselves available in as many aspects and formats as they can, be it email, telephone numbers, social media. Uh, I believe the uh, city of Urbana actually has some of those ways of contacting the alderman in place, but uh, everybody that's got an issue is important to them. So, it should be important to the city and it should be important to the aldermen. So we need to make ourselves available for these and, um, and then stay in touch with them and follow up and, and make sure those needs are met to the best of our abilities. Okay, thank you. Next question. Mr. Coble. what do you believe should be the balance of power between the mayor's office and the city council. I look at the uh, mayor. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting horrendous feedback there. I hope it's not bothering anybody. Um, so yeah. I, I look at the mayor and the council as, as a team. Um, one does not have a ruling or an iron fist, if you'll, if you'll use the expression over the other. They're a team, they need to work together the mayor guides them through there. In the fire service, we have something called the chain of command. And on the fire ground or various fire scenes, uh, it, it's a unified system where everything works together and ideas get bounced off each other and concepts get bounced off of each other. Um, so I, I definitely look at that as a, as a team organization, but it has to have a leader. So that would be the mayor. Thank you. Same question, Ms. Colazetti. What do you believe should be the balance of power between the mayor's office and the city council? I think it is important to recognize that Urbana has that shared governance model um, where the, you know, the city council members or the older persons um, are representing the needs of their specific part of Urbana are likely to be more responsive to, you know, going back to that last question to be hearing more directly from the people who are in their ward um, and are responsible for representing the folks who are in their ward. 
Um, so while the mayor may be looking at kind of the totality of the needs of Urbana, it is important that there is an understanding that both um, the city council and the mayor have specific roles. It is a shared governance model. Um, you know, the, the older persons are responsible for citizens' well-being, for helping with policy, um, for making sure that there is that responsiveness, and they also approve mayoral appointments. Um, so there is that kind of give and take between the, the mayor and the members of city council. Okay, thank you. Next question, Ms. Colazetti. What prior experiences do you have that prepared you for this office? And the second part of the question is, what have been your prior in involvement within the city, with the city? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned in my opening statement, most of my background is in working for nonprofits, especially um, working to address and respond to sexual and domestic violence. Um, so I'm currently at the Women's Resources Center here on campus, and I also worked at Rape Advocacy Counseling and Education Services here in our community before that. Um, so I'm very familiar with uh, the social service needs of our communities as well, the community as well as the resources. Uh, while I was at RACES, Rape Advocacy Counseling and Education Services, um, I also served um, as the vice chair for the Champaign County Mental Health Board um, Agency Council. So again, looking at how do those different nonprofits work together to support the needs of the, of the city and the county. Um, I've served on a number of different leadership boards through the Illinois Coalition Against Sexual Assault as well. Um, and have volunteered my time with organizations our, in our community, including United Way. Um, I'm an active uh, listener for our city, city council meetings. I don't speak unless I have something to say though. Thank you. Same question, Mr. Coble. What prior experiences have you had that prepare you for this office? Second part of the question, what have been your prior involvement with the city? Well, I... I I bring to the table, feedback is horrible, I'm so sorry. Um, I, I bring to the table um, experience, as I mentioned earlier, with budgeting, um, grants and contracts, uh, building infrastructure, city infrastructure, uh, a lot of stuff that I've gained from the fire service there. Um, I've got experience with a lot of capital projects, be it buildings or be it uh, major purchases. I've worked with the federal government to obtain firefighting equipment. Um, I've worked with our fire trustees. Um, I was a chief at Eastern Prairie for uh, attempting to build onto the buildings and, and replacing the fleet of fire apparatus and so forth. And just numerous special projects. When I was um, president of the Fair Association, our, our county fairgrounds does not have a lot of money. so. Uh, as a metaphor, I'm not afraid to get in there and get my hands dirty. You might've found me down in a, in a water pit working on water lines, but I've got the stop sign again. He's good with that. Thank you. Next question, Mr. Coble. What would you do to improve the process of requests for city records? Well, the first thing I need to do uh, not being on the council or having very little need for obtaining those myself, I need to find out what the process is. And um, I would wanna take a quick look or not a long look and, and talk with my constituents and see has there been issues with obtaining records. Uh, I'm not aware that this is a problem, but uh, if, if there is an issue with this and uh, public information is not being released, city records that should be released, we certainly need to get on top of it and, and correct that problem. Thank you. Yeah. Same question, Ms. Colazetti. What would you do to improve the process of requests for city records? Yeah, so this has been an interesting debate in our, in our city in Urbana recently, specifically around the Freedom of Information Act requests or FOIA requests. Um, and I think some of this comes down to a need for greater clarity and transparency. Um, because we've been hearing that people have had requests denied or not um, acknowledged. And I think that it is important to get to the root of why is that happening? There have been some changes in terms of staffing of who's handling those requests as well. Um, so I think that just being able to explain to the citizens of Urbana, to the residents of Urbana, this is the process, this is why we do it this way. Um, 
explaining any changes that may have taken place. I know that they're now offering records um, through a, a secure Dropbox, not only print options. So just making sure that any requests that are coming in um, are following the correct protocols and policies and that they are accessible to people, um, whether they're requesting a print version or an electronic one. Thank you. Let's see, the next question is for Ms. Colazetti. What can be done within the building regulations in order to address climate change? So this is actually a really exciting time for the city because we're about to uh, get, well, we are in the midst of getting going on a new comprehensive plan. So I know that there are specific building regulations already but there's been a lot of discussion with the council of thinking about how do we incentivize green initiatives? How do we make sure that any improvements that the city is making are focused on sustainability, are thinking about climate change? So this is really an opportunity to think about building those requirements or at least some sort of incentive or guidance um, into our, our comprehensive plan. Um, it's been quite some time since we last had one. Our last one came out in 2005, I believe, um, which is far too long. So this really is an exciting time to, to make sure we're thinking about um, everyone's future and the future of the planet. Thank you. Same question. Mr. Kobo, what can be done within the building regulations in order to address climate change? Well, I'm a big fan of, of going green. I've actually looked into to some of that on my own residence here. Um, and driving around the community, driving around the state and the county, I see the solar panels, we see the wind farms going. And uh, certainly it's an investment that I think the city of Urbana uh, needs to continue to make and continue to work on. And, uh, you know, there's always, a lot of that stuff is super expensive, but there's always, uh, Funding available, like we talked about before, there's all kinds of state and federal initiatives uh, to fund those projects. But you know, if the result is a, a cost savings on the energy that the city has to use, or uh, things that can be made available for our residents, so their power bills are less each month, um, definitely move forward on it. Definitely. Okay, and let's see. There's another question. It's like a four part question. Okay. okay. So I'm going to give this one to Mr. Coble, you first. Okay. And um, let's see, it says, what do you think Urbana should do to address issues of racial injustice? That's the first part, specifically, okay civilian review of police, how much power should a review board have? Okay. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll just leave it those two and then I'll ask the second, just to, I'll, I'll break that apart, I'll break that into. Okay, okay. okay. So uh, addressing racial injustice, um, obviously a huge topic on everybody's mind has been for a long time and should have been on everybody's mind for a lot longer time. Um, to address that, we need, uh, it, that's, that's a huge conversation that can't happen in a minute's time, but uh, all aspects of that need addressed. The people that do the job, the police officers, uh, the court systems, the folks that are involved, uh, the victim er uh, side of things, and the, those that may have been arrested or charged or alleged charged. Um, I'm not a lawyer, so uh, forgive my, my verbiage there, but all aspects of that need looked at and addressed. And uh, a, review board, a review board needs to be a good part of that conversation, but they also need to have some input from all those other people that do the job and so on. Thank you. Same question. Ms. Kolesewski, what do you think Urbana should do to address issues of racial injustice, second part, specifically civilian review of police? How much power should a review board have? So I'm gonna clarify quickly, uh, that's Kolesetti. Um, I know it's a, an unusual name for, for in the US, it's an Indian name. Um, 
And I think that this is a great question. Um, I think we have focused a lot of conversations around the need to address racial bias in policing. And that definitely is something that needs to be continued to, to be worked on. Like I said, we are seeing some major changes at the state level. Um, I have to admit, I haven't quite finished the 700 and some page um, new law that just got passed. So I've got a little bit of work still to do to see what all is in there. But I think that that's gonna inform you know, what we do here in Urbana in terms of addressing other gaps. But it is also important to recognize that that is not the only place that racial inequality shows up. We need to be thinking about addressing it across all systems. And we also need to think about proactive approaches uh, to think about how do we create better systems of equity, make sure that we are addressing historic inequality um, and current forms of inequality to create a more um, equitable situation. Okay, thank you. Second part of this question, and this is two part, two, two, a two part question in regards, in regards to the same um, type of questioning. So here we go, it's Colosetti. It's Colosetti. Do you think the city should continue the school resource officer program? And second part of that, how should police misconduct be handled? So it's like you realize I didn't answer part of the, the last question um, that, you know, in terms of the review board, it is important that that's an autonomous body that could have some power to make, make decisions. Um, in terms of, so there's the, the school board and I'm sorry, what was the last piece? And it's um, resource see. officers. The, how do you think the city should continue the school resource officer program? And then how should police misconduct be handled? Um, so the, the school resource officers, um, I have concerns about um, based on academic research. Um, there is research that shows that um, often that leads to increased um, detention for juveniles of color. Um, so I think we need to think about placing resources in more proactive preventative measures. So thinking about what kind of support do our students need to make sure they're not getting labeled as bad, right? And making sure they're not ending up um, in the juvenile justice system or ending up incarcerated in other ways. Um, so I think that we need to have a, a larger look at how we are um, addressing support for students. And I'm out of time. Thank you. Mr. Coble, same question for you, it's two parts. Do you think the city should continue the school resource officer program? And then how should police misconduct be handled? Overall, I, I like the concept of the resource officer in the schools. Um, we, we certainly need to keep on top of, of the policies, procedures, the things that they do, watch the history of how that's had an effect in our schools and make adjustments accordingly. I think having that, uh, that person in the schools can be a, a positive thing. Um, it can also have some negative aspects, but look at the history of it. Uh, I like having that resource available for the kids. Um, the second part of that was uh, police conduct, I'm sorry. It was how do you think the city should continue their school resource officer program and then how should police misconduct be handled? So police misconduct is definitely something that we need to take a look at. Uh, we need to make sure that the policies, programs, the training for our officers are in place. Uh, through my career, I, I have come to know a lot of law enforcement officers. I'd rather walk in a burning building than do their jobs. Uh, and I'm getting the stop sign. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. It is now time for closing statements. Mr. Coble, you are first. Okay. Um, I want folks to know that if I'm elected to the, the council, uh, that I'll do my very best to make sure they get what they expect from their tax dollar. Um, I believe in honesty, integrity, um, fiscal responsibility, all those good things. And I take it to heart when I say that, I truly believe in those things. Um, I also, although I identify as a Republican, I want folks to know that um, 
Champaign County and the council in Urbana are heavily Democrat. Uh, um, uh, and um, I want people to know that when they go to the polls, don't necessarily vote for someone because there's a D or an R or they believe in the colors red and blue. Uh, I want them to vote for who they think is the best person for the job. And um, I'll close by thanking all the players, the News Gazette, uh, NAACP, League of Women Voters, uh, my opponent, I appreciate her. Um, and uh, my hat's off to everybody that is stepping up to serve their community as a candidate. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Colasetti. Yeah, um, this has been a, a wonderful opportunity to get to speak um, to, to this group and as well as to the folks who will be watching this later. Um, my family and I chose to make Urbana our home because it's a vibrant and diverse community. Um, I've had the pleasure of working and serving in this community in multiple roles, including um, at Rape Advocacy Counseling and Education Services and the Women's Resources Center. And I'm really excited to get to serve Urbana in this new way. Um, another role of the city council that we didn't dive into is its work with Cunningham Township, um, the social services that are offered, especially through the supervisor's office. I've had the opportunity to write for those grants. I know how important those services are. I know Urbana's strengths in general, but I also know as someone who's been an advocate and an educator in this community, where we have some areas of growth, um, where we need some support, some change. You know, I've been there with survivors as they've navigated some complicated systems. I've talked to folks who were in crisis and worked in our schools to promote change by providing programming to children. I've had the honor of advocating for many members of our community and I'm ready to advocate for the residents of Ward 4 and all of Urbana. I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Um, and again, would just echo what was already shared, a thank you to everyone who's hosted this and to my opponent for, for being part of this conversation. Thank you. Thanks again to the League of Women Voters of Champaign County, the NAACP and the News Gazette for sponsoring this forum. Thanks to our timer, Ed Roy, who has kept us on schedule. A very special thank you to Jonah Von Behrens who put this forum up together. Just a reminder, it's not too late to register to vote for April 6th election. Information is available on the, on the county clerk's website. Please vote, vote by mail, vote early, or, <laughs> or vote on April the 6th. Because turnout is expected to be light, Please check your polling place for April the 6th. Please vote. Thank you so much, candidates. I appreciate you coming out tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The, sign was, the sign was meant for him, not you. <laughs> Jada, good, Jada, good luck to you. Thank you.